All right, my name is Scott Shore. I'm the president and CEO of Hela Therapeutics. We are pioneering a novel uh, approach for obesity and diabetes. Uh, very pleased to be here. And uh, as a former Army Ranger, I very much appreciate the last presentation and uh, battlefield force protection is very near and dear to my heart. So uh, I love hearing about what DARPA is up to. Um, just waiting to get the Zoom link here. It hasn't come across yet, but I'm working, waiting for it. Okay. Now I've got to be all you can be stuck in my head. Ha <laughs> That's an old marketing campaign. It ends up mine. Ah, logistics. I'm not. Not yet. Um, I'm connected. I can run it. I just have to find it. Yeah, I mailed that to you a few days ago, but um, it's easier. Yep, but it's it's a lot of clicking, unless you have a remote clicker. Um, I keep getting kicked out of this. Let's see if I can stay on the internet here. Did you log into the Zoom client? I don't have the link yet, but I keep getting. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it and then use the comment. Uh, it, it'll be easier if I can do it, but because there's a lot of clicking, but I'll just like sometimes too many clicks per slide. Up all the time. Um, I have the slideshow right here, and I can just run it, and then you can just tell me when to click next slide. Just say next slide. Uh, right. All right, so uh, we're going to go to the first slide, uh, slide one. Um, yes, I'm ready. Thank you. Yeah, this internet's not loving my computer. It's Wi Fi connection. I use a Mac. I can You wouldn't have my, um, my file. Thank you. Okay, so slide one. Okay. Take a look here. Next slide, please. Okay. All right. All right. So just uh, just to summarize, uh, we have the most unique and we believe powerful new entry in the obesity market. Obesity market has been uh, exploding recently in terms of public awareness. Those of us that have been working in the obesity market uh, for years have, have known the therapeutic potential, but largely that therapeutic potential and, and, and development has been constrained within the big two uh, companies, Novo Nordisk and Eli Lilly. And uh, what, we're, what we're bringing is uh, the, the newest approach to treating obesity. So enormous market, we have a novel approach. The, the key aspect of our approach is there are zero side effects and the drugs currently in the market all have significant side effects. We'll show you how that works scientifically on a mechanistic basis. We have a, a partnership with Eli Lilly that's the first of a new kind of partnership for Eli Lilly. And it's, it's simply stunning. And, and what I'm doing now is giving a quick um, overview and then I uh, would, would love to talk to people on a more detailed basis afterwards. So we're gonna go very quickly through the slides, but this partnership with Lilly uh, is a co-development and um, they will invest in the company in our larger round. We are raising uh, in this conversation, uh, filling out a $5 million uh, extension of our existing series A. So that initially was $6 million. We've now added an up to $5 million Series A. We've subscribed half a million. That gets us enough time to generate, a, uh, uh, to basically just run the company while we're working towards VC term sheets for the $40 million 
round that will take us through phase two. We have completed phase one. And I'm running, I'm dressed like this because I'm running all over the city in the rain, uh, talking to VCs and dodging raindrops. So uh, my jacket got soaked. Um, but this conversation today with the Family Office Network of Ivy FON is to look at filling in the $5 million Series A. Um, I expect to get a VC term sheet um, in the next month or so. So this is a very short-term opportunity. Um, we have operating capital um, through Q1 and I expect to uh, add shortly to get us through Q2, but we'll expect to get a term sheet shortly. When we do get the term sheet, we would stop this raise. So this is a very short-term opportunity. I'm happy to walk you through that um, live one-on-one. -on -one. So BC, next slide, please. Obesity is a um, an enormous market, as you might imagine. And what is not known to people, generally speaking, is how much obesity affects so many other disease states. So the obesity link to type 2 diabetes is pretty well known. There's generally about 80% overlap. But the cardiometabolic disorder universe also includes uh, chronic kidney disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is a kind of the progressed, progressed uh, NAFLD or NAFLD, cardiovascular disease, all tied to and made worse by obesity. Next slide, please, Marty. And, uh, oncology as well, right? Yes. So um, I'm going to say next a few times. Oop, you got ahead of me. Can you go back? This is slide four. You were just on slide three. Right. I emailed you the full slide. I think you have the intro deck up now, Marty. Okay. Yeah, which is the deck. The deck I emailed. It's not the deck for right now. The full deck that I emailed you a few days ago versus the intro deck that was mailed a while ago. Okay, let me see if I can find it. It's a PowerPoint, not a PDF, too. Because it's a therapeutic Yes. Right. FO5 PowerPoint, probably yesterday or the day before. Can we just step through it while we wait? Sure. Uh, we'll be backtracking on the other. Okay, so um, the uh, what we're looking at here is um, a really important slide that I pulled from the Obesity Society meeting in San Diego. And uh, recently, the um, or TOS, as we call it, TOS, the Obesity Society. And it shows just how poorly the current treatment options address the issue of obesity. We'll backtrack and talk about all of the different ways it affects these chronic disorders that I mentioned. But uh, on the horizontal axis, you're looking at time, right? So you see um, generally in six month increments along the bottom, uh, and, and the vertical axis will be your weight loss, total weight loss percentage. Um, what you'll see generally is a one-year best outcome on all of the interventions. And then that outcome generally degrades over time. And very few things are la produce lasting outcomes in terms of weight loss. So lifestyle, not really that useful. Any diets, um, you know, don't. You, you have to stick with something for the rest of your life for it to work. And generally people don't do that, right? It's human nature. Your body's always fighting to get to the heaviest weight it's ever been. So you're constantly battling that and uh, you're battling genetics, biology, and, and it's almost an impossible task as evidenced by humanity <laughs> walking around. You can see the evidence um, and you can see the evidence in chronic diseases. The old pharmacotherapies were producing about 10%, five to 10%. You can see that in the blue wave. Uh, the new drug from Lilly Mounjaro uh, is deemed to be the largest biopharmaceutical brand ever in the history of mankind at 50 to $100 billion. Previously, it was Lipitor at $23 billion uh, before Pfizer came along with the vaccine, but that's kind of a blip. So uh, in terms of chronic disorders, the, the high watermark was about $23 billion. Uh, Mounjaro is expected to be about $100 billion. Still only produces roughly 15% total weight loss. You can get to ruin Y gastric bypass. That's the green RYGB. That's gastric bypass permanent procedure. Produces the best results, but there's significant complications, uh, mortality risk. And many people are recidivistic. They basically give the weight back or they gain the weight back, but have already permanently altered their gut. And it's a, it's a terrible outcome. Uh, I have three um, emails you sent me. They're all the, the, the same uh, title here. So it's uh, FO5. So okay. All right. So um, what we're trying to do is bridge the gap between um, where Lily is with Mount Jaro and the aspirational goals, which is to lose uh, 25, 30 percent. Next slide, please. 
<clears throat> so as I mentioned, the, the drugs on the market right now have significant side effects. And uh, generally that means about 20% of subjects trying to go on this new class of medications all under the umbrella of GLP-1, which is Mount Jaro, um, is a dual agonist, but um, GLP-1 is the primary uh, mechanism. And Nova Nordis has Wagovi as their new entry, which is uh, 2.4 milligram semaglutide, also GLP-1. Both cases, GLP-1, let's say 20% of the subject patients can't get through the first two or three months because the nausea and side effects are so extreme. So <coughs> limits treatment options um, if you can't take the drug chronically. <coughs> you also need to stay on the drug for a long time. And what people don't know, the dirty secret of GLP-1 treatment is generally you're going to be on it for 18 months. And then when you get off the drug, you immediately start rebounding. So what we need is something that you can take for the rest of your life that doesn't have side effects and is not injected. And that's what we have. We're the only drug that does that. We produce weight loss. We will produce weight loss um, equivalent to Mount Jaro um, in the 15% range, we believe. And we have data showing that when combined with GLP-1, we can more than double the effect of the GLP-1. So it is a synergistic more than additive, meaning one plus one equals three, generally speaking. Right? There's some synergistic approach between our first drug, which is PYY, and GLP-1. We expect to be the first to bring PYY to market. People have failed to bring that drug to market, or the peptide, because when it is exposed to your system, it causes systemic uh, nausea violent emesis in medical terms, which means basically immediate projectile vomiting. You can't have any PYY in your blood um, above system, above normal biological levels. So what our tech, I don't know if this slide deck has a picture of what we do, but let's see, Marty. Just please. All right. So we put a microdose on your tongue and uh, it melts in seconds, binds to receptors in your tongue. These are the same receptors that you utilize every day to uh, for gustatory sensation, meaning basically taste. So you put something in your mouth, you immediately know if it's hot, cold, sweet, salty, spicy, et cetera. Um, there's a biological reason for that. It's to keep you from ingesting bad things and killing yourself or drinking boiling water and scalding your gut, et cetera. Eating spoiled meat um, is an immediate biological reason for that signaling. We are accessing that same signaling pathway for uh, activating neural targets. So PYY is known generally as the satiety hormone. We're putting a microdose of PYY in your tongue. It binds to your Y2 receptor, sends a signal up the ninth cranial nerve or glossopharyngeal nerve, and it activates um, subsectors of your hypothalamus, which is where satiety centers are in your brain, avoiding the nausea center and area postrema, which is on your brain stem. Uh, when you deliver a drug systemically, it bathes all of those uh, targets. So you get the good with the bad with an injected. In our case, we, we are only accessing the correct targets by binding, specifically targeting the binding receptors that activate the, the neural targets. So it sounds like black magic, but um, it's a drug that doesn't enter your blood and it makes you feel more full without eating than you can feel by eating. Uh, to say that, So basically we give it to you before you eat uh, and uh, you will just eat less. It's not a noticeable sensation. We don't need to cause you to not eat. Uh, you can, uh, what we're looking for is 150 calories a meal, which is a very small reduction, 450 a day, gives you one pound a week, sustainable weight loss. Anything more than that, it's often unsustainable and you get rebound effect. But obviously that's, you know, 52, uh, 52 pounds a year if you can get there. You can't overuse it because if you put too much PYY in your tongue, you bind to the Y5 receptor, which has a counteracting effect. And there's a very lots of crosstalk and signaling going on here. These are not simple mechanisms. And you'll get 10 different answers from five people because <laughs> each of them will have at least two answers. So that's a great question, Marty. Um, there's evidence showing that you can take it once a day and it has a persistent effect for 24 hours. We will in the future study the difference between before every meal or TID and uh, once a day. But because there are no side effects, there's no needles, um, this is a different paradigm. A lot of people want to reduce dose frequency with the needles because you feel terrible and you, you're sticking yourself. In this case, you put it on your tongue and it's gone um, in a minute. Your, your saliva breaks it down immediately and it's a micro dose. So we're talking about two, 25 to 250 micrograms on your tongue versus uh, milligrams and milligrams of injectable uh, drug with low bioavailability. Yes. 
at the market. I just feel like this is um, much more for those who really need to do lots of work versus those who are looking to just. No, it's a, we. And, and Lily would say the same thing because we Lily's on the phone with the VCs right now supporting diligence. So I know exactly what they will say because they're saying it right now. The um, we would be used before to let's say adolescent obesity. There's no solution right now. It's an enormous problem. Pre-diabetes before, and then in the chronic weight loss center treatment, we would be used in conjunction with Manjaro to make it much better without side effect increase. Then we would be used after Manjaro and the other GLP ones, which are not used permanently. They should be used for the rest of your life because it's like hypertension. You don't stop your hypertension meds. But evidence has shown that people are generally on the GLP ones for 18 months and so or, or less. So they would use us to maintain weight loss after the chronic weight loss phase. One thing, what about dosage? If, if, if it's a man that's at 200 pounds versus a woman that's at 110, is it is it uh, required to have the dosage? No, it's again, this is so different than normal uh, pharmacodynamics and normal um, pharmaceutical development. It's like a light switch. So that you're, you're getting to a binary signaling level and you have the adequate binding to the receptor. That's all you need. And then more than that, much, much more like a hundred X more, you start creating a, a, the opposite effect. Um, what we're developing with Lily is a custom molecule. because so we've, we've done all of our st studies, including phase one, with the native PYY336, which is in all of our bodies right now, it's in your mouth right now in varying concentrations. We all have the receptors for it. And uh, with people with obesity, it's dysregulated. So that's why they always report that they never feel full. They're always hungry. PYY response tells you to stop eating and tells you you're full between meals. They don't have that. So it's not, you can't blame this patient population for being lazy, which is a stigma associated with obesity. And it's really hurting the chronic treatment of it. So we um, hopefully I answered your question. Yeah. Next slide, please, Marty. So just summarizing some of the data, this is um, extensive preclinical data that we have um, was adequate to uh, convince Lily that this works um, enough to then go to phase two. Next slide, please. Oh, I have to go back, please, Marty. I'm sorry. The bottom, slide, bottom of this slide shows the synergistic effect. So the green bar is the weight loss associated with um, our PYY in mice. The red uh, arrow and, and line shows the GLP-1. This is a weight gain avoidance in adolescent uh, mice and they have to eat every day. These are significant results in terms of delta and weight. And the combination is uh, more than the sum of the parts. There's some synergistic effect. If PYY did everything the same as GLP-1, seven plus 13 would equal 13. If they're only additive, seven plus 13 would equal 20, but in this case, seven plus 13 equals 28, right? So there's something going on in the interplay between these two peptides that very few people can explain or no one can, but it, it works in combination. Next slide, please. Um, what we have here just showing results from our very successful phase one uh, is that uh, we produce a 20% increase in satiety versus placebo. And what we've shown in the, the, the right chart the left side of the right chart is Exenda, which is a billion dollar drug from Novo Nordisk for the same purpose, uh, weight loss. And they are producing a 10% uh, satiety uh, delta between placebo and the two marketed doses. So we're, we basically produce twice the satiety signal of this billion dollar drug. And this is now being replaced by more effective therapies. Next slide. Uh, just showing the significance of our uh, phase one. It was a perfect, perfect outcome for us. Lily's the best partner in the world. I will, I'm the biggest fan of Lily. The highest PE in the market at 55, they are leading the way. They will have the largest biopharma brand in ever in the history of, of the development of drugs. And they're supporting this company in every way possible, developing a new chemical entity, PYY, with us. We're using their CRO that's embedded in Lilly, which is the best CRO in the world for the studies. They just use the CRO to get the number one future drug approved. So we know which sites to use. We know what protocols to use and they know what the FDA needs to hear in a data package because they just walk that path. So we have the best people at Lilly on this. In fact, the scientists developing the NCEPYY for us are the same scientists that invented and developed Mount Jaro, which the scientific name is Terzepatide. Um, we have the A team there across the board at Lilly and they will co-invest on the 40 million with a VC lead term sheet. So I'm running around here. 
I've got five VCs near a term sheet. Um, and again, what we're doing here with this conversation is filling in a little bit of our $5 million Series A extension with family offices and HNWs. Next slide, please, Marty. So we'll I'll send around uh, the full deck as a follow-up, um, but this is a quick summary of the deal terms. It's basically Perry Passu uh, on our Series A, um, which is $1.40, same pricing as our $6 million previous Series A. Um, there's some anti-dilution uh, preferences in there. And um, yeah, we've got 500 in. We converted two point two and a quarter million dollars of outstanding convertible notes into the A as part of this extension. So we've cleaned up our balance sheet and uh, we're looking to raise 40 million, as I mentioned, um, with, uh, you know, VCs are, are talking about 20 million lead. Lily comes in for something, let's say 10 million, and then it's an easy fill in at that point. We'll probably oversubscribe it. So I'm not, I don't want to sound like a used car salesman, but this is a limited opportunity because there really is because we were about to get a term sheet, I believe. And uh, uh, then we will close this $5 million extension. Um, next slide, please, Marty. About five minutes. Okay, we're ahead of schedule. So um, my background, um, weird background, I grew up overseas, um, mostly uh, went to Dartmouth, I was in the army and I've just been kind of at the innovating uh, after my first job as a sales rep out of the army. My first company um, is now owned by Tomasic and they do about $160 billion a year. Um, I've, I've started other companies. Some of them were successful. Some were not successful, learned a lot of lessons. And I kind of morphed into a private equity turnaround CEO where uh, JP Morgan and others would bring me in to fix broken healthcare companies. This company is not broken, which is wonderful. The last company was GI Dynamics, which was the first implant for type two diabetes and obesity. Uh, so I've been in this space uh, more than most people, it's coming up on nine years. Uh, my chief scientific officer is a brilliant Harvard, MIT scientist. Uh, he's been in this field delivering these peptides and designing them for Millennium. Medtronic, they're trying to deliver these peptides through the Minimed pump system um, and failing because of systemic exposure, which we have solved because we have all of the peptides we think can deliver it with these lingual receptors. All of the peptides are in concentrations in your mouth right now. And we expect to have a full platform of all of the gut peptides delivered with this novel lingual activation to neural signaling pathway. A wonderful scientific uh, chief medical officer who was working with me at the last company. Tim Barbrick is the founder of Sepracor, um, sold it for multi-billion dollars to Dynapon. And he that was uh, Lunesta, if you remember the Lunar Moth uh, commercials. Uh, he's a wonderful entrepreneurial and um, executive and very helpful for me, Rich Horan. Uh, Biograph and Christopher D'Souza at uh, Broadview. Next slide, please, Marty. Um, Lily will say exactly what I'm about to say right now. These are the top research endocrinologists and practicing endocrinologists in the world. They're irreplaceably the best. Um, three of them were working with me at the last company and uh, Rachel and, and Donna were pre-existed um, at the Scientific Advisory Board of Gila when I joined um, the beginning of 21. Uh, They're very involved and helping us with all of our protocols, decision-making and uh, diligence. A uh, quick note on, in terms of scientific integrity, all of our scientific advisors have uh, small cash stipends, no stock. They're, they're very clean on the advice they give us and there's no conflict. They don't benefit financially uh, other than a small cash payment uh, per year. They're just very interested in the science and impacting and publishing and impacting clinical care. Next slide, please. Same thing applies to uh, the uh, lone chronic, metabolic chronic kidney disease specialist, Alan Friedman, and uh, the three top neuroscientists in the world for this who explain what's happening on our calls with the mechanistics of what's happening in the brain when we activate certain neural targets. These are the top guys in the world, irreplaceably fantastic people. We're all friends and they're so committed to this uh, mission. Next slide, please. We have a summary. Yeah, so again, huge markets. Uh, obesity is the new hypertension is one of the uh, the Morgan Stanley papers out there. They expect it to be a $50 billion, $50 billion market by 2030 and um, generally been underserved by innovations in the past. We have a unique biological pathway that's never been used before this uh, lingual binding to neural activation pathway. And uh, we're partnered with the top company in the world um, with significant support for them on every VC call that I need and uh, on an operational basis. And there's a $5 million equity package. Any so, 
Yeah. Sorry about the logistics here and uh, appreciate everybody's patience. I'll be following up with everyone via email and happy to hop on the phone with folks. The, Are you going to be at dinner? I can't because I have, I got scheduled with some VCs that I'm, because the problem is I'm doing two fundraisings. I'm doing the 5 million and the 40 million. <laughs> so, so there's an angel investor online who says they have a bunch of introductions for you and you should reach out to them. I would et cetera, love to. Et cetera. So thank you, Marty. Yeah. I'll put you in touch with them. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Oh, question. Um, your VCs invest in the current round? Oh, we have Broadview. It's an impact fund. It's not traditional VC, but that's it. The rest is angel. Okay. And your, when did the angel invest? So 2017 to 2019, there was a series of closes in the $6 million A. Last year, I put a $1.25 million convertible note out. And then this, well, I guess two years ago, 21, and then 22 was a $1 million note. We converted both of those at the end of 22 into equity. Mm-hmm. What? And the existing angel folks uh, are or are not invited to this round. That's the 500 is all insider right now. Gotcha. So we've we've kind of tapped out our insiders in in a series of notes and the 500k. It's always amazing to me. I mean, yeah, this is this is fantastic. I agree with everything you say except for the 50 billion uh, part. You, know, you think it's bigger? I always want to be conservative. I mean, I'm just quoting Morgan Stanley. I think it's bigger too. I appreciate that. Yeah. But you don't want to come out and say a number that's too big. <laughs> well, the related diseases are, you know, tremendous. I mean, just as I said, you know, I think they've said anywhere from 65% to 75% of on, on, you know, cancers are related to this. Yep. It, so. it tackles the input as well. You know, we have massive food problems. And there's also a quality of food and there's also what the vendors do. But yes, absolutely. So that's fantastic. Scott, great job. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you Scott, all for your questions. That might be one of the most boldest uh, presenters we know since we had Tim Draper on in Miami. And he says, you look at a lot of great stuff. Why don't you fund me? <laughs> something in those words, something like that. Well, yeah, so actually, it got a conversation with Tim. We're talking to Tim. So <laughs> yeah, I presented, Tim asked some great questions. Tim presented next. And then there was an open mic. And I said, so Tim, you saw my presentation. How about an investment? And please don't say no in front of all these people. <laughs> so we're, we're talking to Tim. Um, this is because he he's not a healthcare investor, but everybody understands obesity. It affects everybody and everybody's families. Um, it also, it's a real crisis. Don't even outwardly look obese. Like, for example, I'm what they call tofu, thin on the outside, fat on the inside. Yeah, your visceral fat is the worst part, worst fat, which that, is around your organs. That's my struggle. You know, I'll exercise the hell out of it, but I'm eating cheeseburgers all day, you know, and that's going to help that. Well, in the Asian Pacific Rim, Indian background, you have our BMI starts, obesity starts at 30. But in those markets and in the pack rim area, it's obesity starts at 25 BMI. So you don't look, you can be obese in those markets, in those geographies without looking like an American obese because you just, you don't look as fat, but you still have obesity at a lower BMI because there are certain phenotype differences in our biology. So yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a horrible problem. Fantastic. Well, listen, uh, great. Uh, one last question. Oh, it's interesting to know that internal fat versus external fat. So is our uh, drug for both, uh, is it effective for both types of fat? Yeah, you generally lose fat. You don't, you can't really spot reduce fat. So it's generally your fat content goes down across your entire body in a kind of even fashion. So you want to, you know, the, the, the key number is 10% total weight loss is material. You want more than that, but you need at least 10%. So if somebody has a drug that reduces weight 5%, it's not really an obesity drug. And the, the FDA guidance, it's not a rule, but the guidance is 10% placebo subtracted. Placebo is about two and a half generally. So you need 12 and a half percent total weight loss mean minus placebo to get to that 10% mark. Like Asian, However, does it make the external fat also reduce by 10% thing to begin with? I think this is an off-the-line conversation. Yeah, we can. So he's going to be outside. You can pick it up with him. But great job again. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you.